Hi Nick, welcome to QB headquarters. First question, how did you get your nicknames Minty and The General? The General was from a drinking game, <laughs> so I'd rather probably not divulge too much, but it meant that uh, I was probably in charge. Uh, <laughs> Minty, uh, to do with the fact they think I've got a fake Cockney East End accent and the first character from East Enders that they could think of was Minty. Minty. A fat ball mechanic, yeah, which I'm hoping I don't look anything like. What does being a rugby ambassador for QB actually mean? Oh, it, it, means, it means a lot. Um, you know, they're, they're a huge um, business insurer, and um, you know, I, did a, I did a little bit of work for them, or you know, a little bit of promotion once I became a partner in, in the RFU um, in February, and you know, delighted to come around the offices and everything. And, and luckily enough, you know, they've employed me to be their ambassador. You know. Being a guy who's worked in the city as well before, um, got a few city links, that so right. it's, it's good to come back after being away for so long. How did you get into rugby as, as a youth and um, what attributes does it take to play rugby at the, at the top flight, at the top level? Uh, I started off rugby, I suppose it was compulsory the school I went at. Um, I, was at I went to Dulwich College, the, the prep school there, uh, in this, about this time obviously. Um, the autumn term you played rugby and um, I enjoyed. I always had a you know passion for a lot of sports, but probably look forward to rugby season a little bit more than the others. Okay. Might not do have, have had anything to do with the sport. To be honest, it's probably more the fact there weren't any exams at the end of the term. Okay. Whereas uh, when you get to the cricket season, you had exams at the end of that one, so there's something not to look forward to. Um, <laughs> when you're playing top flight rugby, yeah, um, you need to be, you need to be able to cope with the pressure. Um, that comes with obviously you know. Put yourself under pressure in training as much as you can. Obviously, match experience is is, is key. But uh, you know the, the values in rugby, sort of like you know the teamwork, the goal setting, you know, right. which obviously you get you get feedback and results and, and from them every single week because you've obviously played a game, and so you can review that and then move on and, and obviously look to work on and improve. What is your preferred position? Because I know you play number eight and blind side flanker. What is your preferred position if if there is one? Oh, uh, number eight. Number eight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's the best position on the park. It doesn't matter what the weather is. You're always involved in the game. You can play in the backs, you know, it's a bit windy and a bit wet, you're not mm -hmm. going to see much of the ball, you're just going to be Appreciate chasing that. kicks and things like that, yep. but uh, you're back here. Yeah. I used to be a winger. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you, know, you get the glory, uh, you know, on some occasions, but there's, uh, there's other times, you know, come the winter months that you'd rather be, uh, you know, still involved in the game, in nice, nice and yeah. snug and close to your teammates. You've got a first number eight to score four tries in one game. Um, what's your secret to scoring so many tries? Uh, right place, right time, let everyone else do the work. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Um, who are your, your favourite players past um, in the past, and um, what attributes do they have that you aspire to? Um, Zinzan Brook in my position, yeah, you know, always player. admired him. I mean, mm -hmm. the New Zealand side of the lot, sort of '95 World Cup, I know mm -hmm. they didn't win it, but when Lomu came along and everything, but they just had a new sort of take on the game, and it was you know, open it was, rugby. It, yeah. yeah, I mean. Not so much numbers on your back. Everyone's got to have, you know, ball handling skills That's right. to be able to have the mobility and support play mm -hmm. and everything like that. And uh, you know, he was at the forefront of that, along with being able to kick forty-five metre drop goals, which was very unusual yep. for a number eight. Sort of, he was a bit of a standout player. But he did his basics well, and you've got to be able to do your basics well. It's not about, you know, just doing the flash stuff. You've got, you know, the nuts and bolts at the back of the scrum for a number eight. You know, making your tackles. You know, make, you know, aggressive hits, taking the ball over the gain line, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, your link play with a nine and support mm -hmm. play as well. Describe a typical week in professional rugby for us. Hard. Um, <laughs> lots of eating, lots of rest and a lot of work. But uh, typical week would be, OK, you play a game on a Saturday. Monday, you'd sort of come in, just, you know, top up weights, you know, nothing, nothing too difficult. The recovery, swim, stretch, a bit of massage. Um, so it's still two days after the game. You're still, that's probably when, you know, the stiff, stiffness and soreness comes out the most, actually, 48 okay. hours after. Um, then we will have a team review. You know, sort of review the game that's you know just bit, just happened on the Saturday. Get that out of the way. Okay. You know, any you know good stuff, any any work ons. Tuesday will be the hard day. Um, you'll be in early morning. You know, doing your main weight session, all all, all body weight. You know, working hard. Then you'll sort of have it's been a forward. You know, forwards and backs will split for you know their unit sessions. As far as forwards are concerned, it's line outs, line out defence, okay. scrums. And you know may, maybe a few plays off, you know running off nine and things like that. That'll be sort of just before the just before twelve o'clock or something. Break for lunch, and then uh, you'll have your main session in the afternoon, which sort of encompass defence and attack really. And that's when the back, you know, the whole team comes together. Wednesday will be a day off. Um, Thursday, 
again we'll have weights in the morning and then we'll have sort of a shorter version of a Tuesday afternoon session so again we come together but a shorter sort of lighter version because obviously there's two days away from the game we won't want to you know take too many knocks keep the guys fresh mm -hmm. and then Friday will be sort of 20 minutes just a run through of you know certain plays not too much okay. and uh, you know rest fresh and ready to go for the weekend. What's the future for England and the Keister? I mean do you see yourself captain in England in the World Cup finals next year? Oh, just um, I mean, that would be amazing, but uh, that's not for me to decide whether I get in a position like that. But mm. what is you know in my control is how I play, and just to you know keep playing well for Quinns and England, and hopefully you know sort of achieve achieve a lot more victories and start winning some silverware. You know, so with with both with both, you know, we got Grand Slam opportunity or Six Nations opportunity rather, sort of next season. That's right. The Autumn Internationals coming up, um, obviously the World Cup internationally. And with Harlequins, you know, so it's a big year for us as well. You know, there's been a few changes there, but you know, there's there's some good potential uh, amongst the squad, and you know, we've only got drawn a little loss so far, but uh, we're looking to kick on, and it's a it's a tight competition, the Premiership, and uh, I think we can do well. Damn brilliant! Thank you for your time. Good Cheers, answer. Barry. Thanks Cheers. for your questions. Mate. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks. Thanks.